Right folks, this is a, as you've seen from the title, it's another newspaper review, the Daily Star, uh, Monday, February the 10th, 2020. Now, I am doing a little bit of an experiment. I have bought myself a microphone and I've also bought myself some lighting because um, I've done a video uh, and at the beginning of the video I says I want to try and improve things, right? Uh, these are just cheap and nasty, uh, not nasty, I won't say nasty, but they're just there to see if I can thing this. I won't be changing my channel. Um, it'll still be like this. I won't edit. I might join video, well, I will join videos up, but I won't be editing. Anyway, uh, let me know how this goes, folks. Let me know if you think the lighting's okay. I'm, this is just completely new to me. And um, it's a dark day. We've got a storm going on outside. And um, I'm just trying to see if this can improve it so I can take the channel to the next step. Um, anyway, it is Monday, the February the 10th, the 20th, the 20th. And um, I'm just going to go through this, uh, the Daily Star. Uh, Strictly Champs, Kelvin Fletcher and Otti Mabusi, Mabus, 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 I don't know. I don't watch Strictly. Um, arrive at 3am for a drink in a hotel. The pair won the Glitter Ball in December after thrilling fans with their steamy routines. Uh, page five. Um, so there it is then. Strictly champions, Kelvin Fletcher. And now then, let's just see. Are they married? Uh, the former Emmerdale star. Oh, that's uh, Thingy Dingle. Not Dingle. Um, so, um, oh. Yeah, whatever. Uh, the married dad of two is not, is not partnered with Otty29. She's filming BBC The Greatest Dancer. The pair raised the Glitter Ball Trophy in December after thrilling fans with their routine. Last night, a source close to the Joe said they uh, had drinks in the bar and both went home afterwards. Um, well, um, make of this what you will, folks. I am not going to uh, make a comment on that because it is not for me to say. Um, they are grown-up people and if, um, you know, whatever. Um... The last remaining chimney at Didcot's uh, disused coal run power station was demolished yesterday. The 665 tower, uh, the tallest structure in the Oxfordshire site, was uh, felled in a controlled explosion. It marked the final stage of de uh, demolition of the three cooling towers. Uh, yeah, whatever. I suppose it's progress. Is it progress? I do not know. Uh, a victim of an acid attack ends up in hospital every three... We're still in acid attacks. New shocking NHS figures reveal. Um, there's nothing about acid attacks in the papers or stuff, is there, nowadays? Um, I really must do the video on how I would treat these criminals and uh, this kind of thing. I really must do it. I keep saying I'm going to do it, but I never seem to get around to doing it. How I would punish um, this lot who do this. Uh, there was 123 incidents which left victims needed hospital treatment. Between 2018 and 2019, London had the most offences. Well, there's a fucking surprise. Uh, London had the most offences, 25 attacks followed by the North West on 20. Uh, the police say the real scale of the problem is worse as many victims do not go to hospital. How the fuck do you not go to hospital when you've been covered in acid? It's just absolutely amazing how people can... Do you know what? I think if I was actually going to be attacked, um, I would, you know, don't just throw something. At least come at me and, I don't know. It's It just seems a real cowardly thing to do. Well, it's just a fucking coward thing to do anyway, because most of these things are happening when people aren't ready. Uh, Liam Gallagher reckons if Oasis reform, Ian Noel will have a punch-up on stage within minutes. The singer said he would... Well, can't we have a glass screen? A bit like when Cilla Black used to do Blind Date. Got a lot, a lot of laughs and ooh, all that kind of thing. It'd be great. You could have a glass screen like they were in prison so they couldn't get at each other. That'd be the way to do it. Leon could get changed that side. Noel could get changed that side. And then they wouldn't really have to meet. And um, they'd just do the... Uh, I reckon that'd work. Uh, Abby Clancy is offering relationship advice to single ladies ahead of Valentine's Day. The mum of four married to former footballer Ace Peter Ace. Peter Cow uh, Crouch uh, wants to give out love guru wisdom. Well, for fuck's sake. 
when you're footballing husbands a millionaire you haven't really got to worry about money kind of things have you when you know that's where you know oh god uh right here we go Harry's at uh, Fury at Harry's Diana speech. Prince Harry has been accused of cashing in on the death of Princess Diana by talking about his mental health uh, battles to pocket an estimated 775,000. Well, the thing is now, old Ginger ain't being um, supported by the uh, public purses, is he? So he's got to make money somehow. Um, I would have thought, though, with Harry and his mum uh, dying as she did, he would have had... Uh, I, I suppose he, I'm, I'm a big fan. I've done a couple of videos where I've spoke about things that have actually happened to me. And then people come up and say, oh, you should talk about this and you should talk about that. Well, if it's not happened to me, I can't actually give the details of how I feel. You know, it's like I've said, you get these people who go to university and stuff and then they are supposed to be qualified to give people advice when they've not actually had any life experience. So how can they, how can they do anything? Where Harry has had that experience of, you know, we've all basically had his his life in the the his life's been on, on the papers all the while on the television, and so he has got you know qualifications in my book if I had a book uh, to do that. Uh, Kate Ferdinand struggling to become the perfect wife and cried every day after moving in with the TV pundit. Now, Rio Ferdinand, quality quality player. But didn't he um, have a few affairs and stuff with his wife in the first place, uh, behind her back and all that? You know, I'm, I'm, I'm you know, it's, I'm not, I'm not, he's, he seems to be, you know, making out of it that, you know, he was the perfect husband when he was far from the perfect husband. Um, so perhaps he's learnt from his mistakes and this is his, um, you know, his, his thing again, but um, I don't know. Rio, stick to football. Talking. Paddy McGuinness has revealed that most of the digs while filming top, uh, most of the digs, which is like places where you go, I used to sort the digs out when you used to work away from home, were filmed top. Uh, while well, filming Top Gear abroad, were shit holes. Even when the petrol heads gang stumbled on a location with a swimming pool, it turned out to be a nightmare state. Uh, well, that's, that just adds to the. Uh, can I just catch my mic then with the for, with the for, uh, with the for, for, for paper? Um, here we go. A commuters face a travelling nightmare as May end Monday after the country's worst storm in seven years called carnage. Fucking carnage. Uh, yesterday, buildings were destroyed, homes left without power, roads, floods, and trains lines crippled as storm Kyra let rip with a hundred and a five mile mph winds. Um, it was bad. It was bad. I was at work yesterday and we couldn't, uh, we have these silos at our works and uh, tankers come and they fill these silos that we fill it. And we couldn't, uh, I, well, I couldn't unload them because the wind were that bad. It would have, as the, the silo, as the tank uh, goes up to empty because it's fed through the thing at the back of the lorry by gravity. Um, we couldn't do it in case it blowed over. Um, I think they're doing them now. It's calmed down a bit. Pete, Pete Corser, he's, uh, he's got it sorted. A uh, paraglider was dangling from a tree for 45 minutes near a motorway station. The woman, the woman was plucked to safety by fire uh, fighters using the cherry picker after her chute got tangled. Uh, motorists watched as the M4 um, memory services between Newbury, Burks, rather appropriate, uh, and Swindon, Wilts, uh, as the uh, she was trapped in there for stupid woman oh, stupid. and do you know what right there was somebody in the I saw something on the uh, internet today uh, some idiot has gone out um, surfing right and then uh, the, the lifeboats had to go out there and rescue the prick and it's turned the bloody boat over personally what should happen is right there's one thing if a fishing uh, boat's out at sea and it gets into trouble because it's already out there when things are happening in the country and then some prick goes out there surfing, thinks he's fucking brilliant, right? And then the uh, the fight, not the fiber great, the um, lifeboat people, men and women, have to go out there and rescue him, putting their lives in danger. Personally, they should say, no, you went out there, you can fucking stay out there. This is about part of being responsible, taking responsibility for yourself. Don't put yourself in danger to put others in danger, you fucking prick. Uh, a boy of 12 who got... 
who got his kneecap trapped in a uh, trap, 10 foot up a climbing frame, had to be free, uh, freed for our firefighters. You see, there's again, you see, I bet he was just messing around. County line gangs are lavishing single mums with gifts and cash to recruit their kids as drug mules. Uh, Matthew Norford, 37, a former member of a Manchester mob, the Rush Home gang uh, crew gangsters, said mums are groomed most of the single parents with kids on the street. I suppose it's there, isn't it? It is there. They see a weakness and um, it, they take on it. It's, uh, it's, it's just completely bloody wrong. Uh... We see we've got Philip Schofield now. He's come out as gay. That's, do you know what, right? The gay thing with Schofield, it's, um, there's something deeper in this Schofield thing. Um, I think most people always had the suspicions, but because you were married with two kids, you never really took it on board. Uh, but I personally think that there was going to be some story in the papers about this and he has beat them to it and um it just makes you wonder the, i mean they're the saying how his wife has stood by him and all that kind of thing would his wife have stood by him if it was a i don't know a 30 something lady and all that kind of thing because obviously if he is gay he's been having uh sexual relationships with uh other men kind of thing um, you don't go gay and then not do anything about it. Oh, you perhaps you might do. I don't know. I, I, you know, I'm just thinking, like most people out there, um, I can't say I'm a big fan of Schofield. I can't say I hate the bloke. He's all right. He does a, jo a good job. He's quite funny and everything. So I've got nothing against him. But uh, I'm just. it just makes you wonder if there was something that was going to actually happen, come out, and if things will probably come out about this. Um, I hope Phil's strong enough minded to go through all this um i'm sure he'll have the support of itv uh because of this and um you know they obviously see money in schofield and uh they will support him all the way through but unlike caroline flack who had a moments of uh hitting a boyfriend and stuff where itv basically just dumped her uh, and offered her no support whatsoever because obviously they don't make enough money out of caroline flack a thug flew uh, a flug flew. A thug who threw flammable liquid over his partner before setting her on fire has been jailed for life. Sean Thomas, 48, used a lighter to set the woman ablaze while she's sitting uh, while she was sitting on a sofa at their home. The woman suffered horrific burns so severe part uh, by the woman suffered horrific burns to several parts of her body. The yob also broke the lock to the back door to prevent his girlfriend escaping from the property in Bedford. Thomas was ordered to serve a minimum of seven years. Now, this is what one of the videos I want to do. Um, seven years, right, for throwing lighter, flammable liquid over a woman and then, well, anybody really, it's, it's, this is not a sexist thing, over a woman and setting on fire to them and it's been to serve at least seven Seven years. Uh, the, the, Thomas was ordered to serve a minimum of seven years. Seven fucking years, right? I have got to do this video on things. I have got to do this how I would treat uh, things. But seven years, right? He, he, he should not see the light of day again. That should be it. I don't understand how the, a judge honestly thinks or any the law of this country seems to think that seven years is long enough for setting somebody on fucking fire what is going wrong oh, we're not bothered about bloody that shite uh caroline flack oh i've just been talking about you and i there you go uh, the telly host who stepped down from a 1.2 million a year Love Island job after being charged with assault is using downtime before next month's trial to write it. Um, Caroline Flack has found the process incredibly chaotic. Uh, she wants to be more about... Uh... It's just amazing, mate, to be fair. that uh, I, I honestly can't believe that the ITV lot dumped her and didn't offer her no support. Um, I hope I'm wrong in a way. I hope they did offer her support and she turned it down. But 
There you go. Anton Decker teaming up with Paul Hollywood to boost ratings for the Saturday night takeaway. Can't fucking stick, Paul Hollywood. Can't stick him at all. Uh, left his wife. Uh, thought he were being clever to shack up with some uh, younger lady. And um, all went sour. Um, Paul, this is not... I don't know. Uh, uh, what? He, oh, fucking idiots. I just can't stick Paul Hollywood. I don't think he's, he's that good, to be fair. Um... And I think that could be a bit of a downfall, Anton Deck. Uh, tea drinkers who less tea drinkers have less belly flab than those who do not enjoy a brew. A study found uh, those who drank just one cup a day had 1.7% less belly fat. Oh, more shit! It, it, it's fucking just shit. I drink tea, but I'm still got a belly. But I do, it's just. June drinks tea by the bucket. Fucking bucket. She loves the damn stuff. Tea. Uh, a girl of 15 has been arrested on suspicion of conspiracy to commit murder following the fatal stabbing of a teenage boy. Victim Babakar Diagnu, uh, 15, was found on grassland in Coventry last week. Um, undies and toothbrushes are top of a list of items that people refuse to share. They also draw the line at handing over razors and social media passwords and all that kind of stuff. Um, uh, yeah, probably not really. Um, I think if you're in the family, it don't matter. But I don't think I'd let, you know, Babs from work uh, use my toothbrush. Um, no. Look Babs from work up on Twitter and say, BBM sent me. Right. Um... Jamie Oliver and G Giannano Conti Conto Aldo uh, pucker up for a famous spaghetti bowl. Uh, that's just fucking shit. I think that's probably just trying to get uh, Jamie's restaurants back in the booking line. Um, Brayton is facing a major outbreak of the Cornelius virus, uh, which is bigger threat than the Ebola virus that fears it could... Cr right, all this is now is just... Um, scaremongering it's just scaremongering there's something cracking off and it's just it's a greater threat because of mode of transport uh the potential is for spreads much more higher what they needs to be done is they need to get a fucking act in uh their act together in china and stop people eating any kind of fucking animal that they find in the street it's a complete joke i don't know what they're doing out there why are they eating everything that fucking moves uh Right, Tony Blair. Jihadis dodge charges. Terrorists are going unpunished because of charges left on uh, left to light on file. A think tank suggests more than 40 jihadis were sentenced for fewer crimes than they were originally accused of. This is something else, isn't it? This is, I'm getting fed up with all this thing and all. Why can't people just fucking live alone, just get along? Why have we got to go around fucking, well, I don't go around, but blowing people up and running around fucking streets with machetes and stuff? Just everybody get along. Fuck's sake. Well, yeah, this, is, this terrorist Shadish Aman tried to persuade a former girlfriend to behead her parents. The 21-year-old woman last uh, said his knife rampage last week brought back horrific memories of their relationship. Uh, Aman, insert, there's a picture of the fucking idiot there, uh, persuaded the woman to a fellow gamer who is, he met online playing a game such as Call of Duty to convert to Islam and he's uh, messaged her to behead the Kufla Kufa parents. Is that the non-believers? I just, I just don't understand it. I just don't understand how somebody's life can be taken over by a religion. Somebody, yeah, if you want to be follow religion, then follow it, but don't. Just, oh, just people just fucking live along. Oh, Slate drummer uh, Don Powers stunned after being booted out of the band with a brutal email. Uh, Don, who has played with the veteran rockers for 54 years, claimed he's still reeling after guitarist Dave Hill, asked him with the big head, forehead, in it, and the big teeth. Uh, sent him a cold message last week. All I know is I got the email saying Dave didn't want me to work with him anymore. What can I say? He's been somebody I've worked with for, since 1963. Uh, yeah, whatever. Fucking worst things happening, isn't it? Uh, serial killer Rose West is a, sadi a sexual sadist. Well, I think we know that, don't we? According to a top psychological part, uh, taking part 
in a new TV drama. Well, I think that's pretty fucking obvious. When they sexually assault uh, young women and then bury them in the fucking cellar, that I don't think you need to be a top psychological uh, psycholo psych psychologist to work that out. I think I could have done that myself. <sighs> Just fucking amazes me. It's a bit of a slow news, folks, today, isn't it? There's not much in here. Oh, problem page, Just Jane. Let's have a look at Just Jane. Um, people keep saying with me and Jim, ought to do a problem page thing. We might just do it. We might just do it. Um, price of hating family. Uh, I can't stand to spend time with my family. There's not one of them I respect. Uh, respect. My grandmother likes to throw parties and I get grief for not turning up. But why would I? I want to spend my free time listening to my brother. Why do I want to spend my free time listening to my brother boasting about his wealth or my mum moaning about her menopause? My dad recently hinted he might write me out of the will. How is that fair? My parents own two houses and have considerable savings. Do I just put an act on? Um, I'll tell you the best thing to do, love. Go get yourself a fucking job. Make a load of money and then give them that. Say, are these yours? I found them in your fucking will. Uh, a worry that my jealous partner spies on me. I fear that he has bugged my flat and gets my colleagues to report back to him. He's a very charming and very good looking guy, but better than anyone I've ever dated. Way better than anybody uh, I've dated before. He dresses immaculately. Uh, he's a fantastic lover. He's always saying he adores me and he respects my wishes and ambitions, but he cannot stand the fact I won't move in with him. He reckons uh, we'd be a good thing. I'll tell you what, love, you want to dump him straight the fucking way because if he's that possessive now and you're not even fucking married, he's going to be a nightmare when you are. Uh, he reckons we'll be good together. I cherish my independence. No, that one. Oh, is it? What? Oh, independent ladies. That's fucking Charlie's Angels in it. Oh, fuck knows. Um, he knows too much about my movements, thoughts, and thoughts and plans. The other day, I said I couldn't see him because I was visiting my dying uh, godmother. He said, oh, that's right. She's been given a month to live. But I never told him that. Fuck it, now. <sighs> truth. Get rid. Just get fucking rid. Uh, he knows he often sees some of my... I know he, he often sees some of my colleagues in a nearby pub. He buys them drinks and sucks up to them. Um, he assigned one or two of them up. Uh, I just fucking get rid because you're getting deeper and deeper in there and it's going to be a complete disaster because once he's got you uh, I dread asking favours anytime I ask my oldest friend for a favour she then requests something bigger in return she waits 24 hours and then hits me with what she wants. How do I make her understand that we're not in a competition? I rely on her to pick me up and drop off my kids at school, yet uh, if I beg her to keep them at her house and get them ready for bed or even allow them to stay overnight, she retaliates. Recently, she asked if I could lend her five grand and then gave, me, uh, and then gave her the keys to my mum's Portuguese villa for a fortnight. Yeah... Yeah, I, tell you, I think you're probably taking the piss out of your friend and your friend's like saying, right, fuck you then, I'll tell you what I can get out of you. Uh, he grew beard to wind me up. My, boy, my boyfriend has deliberately grown a long shaggy beard just to annoy me. He knows I hate facial hair. And the dead badger of a stinker, uh, of this is a stinker, literally. Well, look, it's his life, then it's your life. If you're not happy with him, fucking kick him out. Get on with it. Bloody hell, if you don't like a beard, fucking tell him. And if you say, no, right, this is you, this is me. You keep your beard, I'm off. There's a lot of fucking people out there, you know. Right, on to the sports. Got a few minutes left. Uh, England uh, beats Scotland. Uh, there's a thing on the... Um, the internet that uh, a load of Scottish fans have, uh, were abusing the English team in Scotland, uh, singing and chanting naughty stuff at them. Brilliant. That is what it's about. That is what rugby and rivalry is about. I don't agree with the bottle being thrown at um, the England team, but chanting and singing and everything is what it's about. England have got a big 
big, strong history. They're blaming Nicola fucking Sturgeon, for fuck's sake. Only so stupid. It, that would happen even if Nicola Sturgeon weren't about. It's what it's about. For me, England used to go into Scotland and go in like the sheriff had shagged the bloody women to, before on the wedding night. It's the way it goes. So the Scotland's are bound to be, the Scottish are bound to be pissed off with us. So let it happen. Fuck's sake, because I tell you what, at the end of the game, right, I bet most of them still go and have a drink, right? You never hear of fighting and stuff with the rugby fans. So just shut up and let it happen. It's all part and parcel. In fact, it's quite an insult to rugby fans, really, because rugby fans, I used to go and watch the Tigers play, and you'd all mix in with the away fans, and you'd have a bit of banter and stuff. Yet you go and to football, and like there used to be no end of trouble, and it was ridiculous. So just give the fucking rugby fans the respect they deserve, that there were no... Yeah, they threw a bottle and whatever. But, like I said, I didn't agree with that. Sheffield United 1-2-1 against Bournemouth I also understand that uh, the game was called off between Manchester City and West Ham um, why? and don't give me this shit about health and safety uh, because I can't see it because people would have still been walking around outside whatever just pathetic honestly honestly pathetic can't believe it happened uh, so that's it really folks, uh, a bit of a slow news day, I just wanted to do this uh, thing because uh, I wanted to see if the microphone worked uh, and all that kind of stuff um, and the lighting behind me. What do you think to the lighting folks, please put your comments below uh, and we'll give it a go another time. Alright folks, laters.